The next functionality we're going to add to our app is the delete functionality. How this will work is the user will select an author from the table, click on it, and then click on the delete button. And then the author that, that has been selected, that, he, that the user selected, will be deleted. To begin with, we double click on the delete button to open up the handler for the delete button. And the first thing we need to do is to get the ID of the author that was selected. And we can do that by calling the variable that we created previously, int selected author ID. Now this, uh, this will be set when the user clicks on the table. Whenever the user clicks on an author on the table, automatically this variable is populated with the author of that, uh, with the ID of that particular author. So now the first thing we need to do is to get an entity manager factory. All right. It becomes a bit cumbersome to keep uh, typing this over and over, but later on we're going to clear this all up. So we need an author JPA controller. And we pass it EMF. And now we're going to use that controller to delete the author that's been selected. And we use the JPA author JPA controllers destroy method. selected author ID and there we have it all we need to do is to call that uh, uh, that method but you can see that NetBeans is showing me an error here and the reason for this is that this uh, this uh, line needs to be uh, surrounded by a try catch block so alternate enter gives me that hint and there we go for free NetBeans adds the uh, the try catch block for me Okay, once the author has been deleted, there's two things we need to do. Firstly, we need to clear the, the table, or the text fields rather. And secondly, we need to refresh the table. So we call the bind authors table uh, field. And finally, we set the selected author ID to minus one. And there we have it. Let's run our app and see if it works. All right, let's select uh, Stephen King, click on delete, and there we go, Stephen King is history. Now the delete operation is a potentially risky operation for the simple reason that deleting an author from your database uh, table can lead uh, to data integrity issues in your database table. Now to demonstrate this, when we look at our uh, author table, we have two authors, Dean Coons and Charles Dickens. And when we look at the books table, we have one book, Oliver Twist, written by Charles Dickens. Now, imagine if we had to delete Charles Dickens. What would happen is we would have a book in the books uh, table that would be pointing to an author that doesn't actually exist anymore in the database. And that would cause a data integrity issue in your database. And that could lead to major problems in your application. Let me demonstrate. So Charles Dickens is there. I'm going to delete Charles Dickens. No problem. Uh, the database allowed me, my app allowed me to delete uh, Charles Dickens from the database. And when I go to book, all right, it's showing Charles Dickens there as the author. But let me close the app and restart. Immediately I try to restart my app and this is what I get, a null pointer exception. 
Now, a lot of people get stuck here at this stage and they wonder why the app has failed and why it's giving this null pointer exception because it doesn't give anything more descriptive than a null pointer exception. That's about all it says. But the problem lies in the fact that we are trying to uh, establish uh, a connection with the table that has a major data integrity issue. We're trying to, in actual fact, in the uh, front end, we're trying to bind a table to a uh, a J table to a database table that has an entry that doesn't exist. Now, in order to fix this, the first thing we'll have to do is to go and delete the book Oliver Twist. So you need to go into your database, call up books, right click on the books table, click on view data, and there's Oliver Twist. We need to select it and uh, delete it from the table. Then and only then will our app run again. All right, this time it's running and we shouldn't get any uh, issues because the offending entry, which is Oliver Twist, is gone from the table. Now the question is, how do we avoid this problem? To avoid this problem, we have to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is to check before we delete an author to check that that author has no books listed under his name and only if there are zero books in the list then we can uh, delete that author or delete that author from the list otherwise we'll have to issue the user a warning that you cannot delete this author uh, from the table the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to go about checking that the author has no books to his name before deleting So the first thing we're going to do is to create uh, a method that returns all the books that have been written by a particular author. So we put this method into the books JPA controller. The book, the method would be a public method. Its return type is a list of type books. The name of the method that we, we created is get books by author. And this method receives uh, a parameter which is of type author. All right, what do we do? We get the entity manager in this way. All right, then we create a query. Using the entity manager, we create a query, select B from books where B dot author is equal to author. In other words, bring back all the books where the author is the same as the author that we've sent through. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is to set the parameter author for that query. All right, set parameter, uh, basically it places the author that, that's uh, come in as a parameter to this method, which is this author, it places it in its place in the query. And lastly, we run the query and return the list to the calling method. Okay, the last step is to modify the event handler for the delete button for author. All right, so we modify it in this way. Number one, we add uh, books, uh, book controller, a JPA controller. Then we use the controller to bring back all books that belong to this particular author that we are trying to delete. All right, the next step is to get a, uh, the size of that, of that list. And the size of the list is an integer and it'll be stored in this variable number of books. Now, once we have the number of books that are in that list, we can check against that uh, number. So in the next line in 457, what we are doing is we are checking if that number is less than or equal to zero. So in other words, if there's nothing in the list, if it's an empty list, what we do is we go ahead and we delete this author. So only if the list is empty, then we go ahead and delete the author, otherwise, we go out uh, uh, and uh, we show the user um, show me a, a message dialog box that gives him this warning you cannot delete an author who has books now it's time to test our code if you look at the books tab all right we see there's an author huck Finn, who has a story a book called another story under his name now let's try and delete huck Finn. select and delete and instantly our app gives us a message you cannot delete an author who has books very well 
So now the only way to delete Huckfin is to first delete his book, Another Story. Once the book is deleted, then it will be possible to delete Huckfin.